Welcome back. Thank you again for joining me on your Friday evening for my open house for Epicure's new fall 2020, I guess it's fall winter 2024 catalog. Super excited. We just did the Mexican street corn dip and I will say <laughs> that my husband and I were gobbling it all up in between. It's delicious. I do, I do think I put in about two and a bit cups of, maybe two and a half cups of corn. I actually like it with a little bit more corn. So it's really filling and we'd use like crackers with it, like those gluten-free crackers that you can get from Costco. So not that I'm gluten-free, but I have lots of gluten-free products in my house for my open house. So welcome back. We are going to talk Cincinnati chili. This one's a bit of a different one. So when I saw this one in my Epic box, truthfully, I hadn't tried it yet. Um, it was interesting because when you read the... Um, ingredients on the back here it's got like cinnamon in it and it's got chili pepper which is normal it's got apple cider vinegar cocoa powder and it's got spices in my oh it's got all spice in here so this is a different one so when I think of chili I think of chili like chili chili meat beans all that kind of stuff where you just eat it by itself not too sure if that's how you guys feel about it. So I see that people are popping on. Thank you so much for joining me. I see Sue, I see Darlene, I see Kimberly. Oh, Kimberly, thanks for popping on. I know you're not feeling really great. So glad well, to have you here. I was questioning oh, cocoa powder. Cocoa powder, yes. So I know that in Mexican cooking, they do actually use cocoa powder in a lot of different dishes. The one that I think of specifically was the mole. And my understanding is um, cocoa powder brings up the flavor. I think I saw Darlene's name fly by. Yeah. Yeah. Darlene can probably answer that better than I can. Maybe you need to be an Epicure ambassador, Darlene. Um, so cocoa, my understanding, will actually bring up the flavors of the spices. It's not like it's going to be chocolate tasting um, chili. So, but it is definitely a different, it's sort of like a sweet, um, um, different spices, sort of like baking kind of spices, but with chili spices as well. And it's not sort of a eat with a soup and spoon and just eat your chili. It is more like a sauce. So it's meant to be served on things like spaghetti and things like that. So this is not a 20 minute meal. However, I think you can do this in a little bit different. I was thinking about it last night. Um, so this one, according to the package, is gonna simmer on my stove tonight for an hour to an hour and a half until you sort of get the thickness that you're wanting. I think you could actually make this up and throw it in a crock pot on a low and just let the crock pot do it. I might try that another time. So, but tonight I'm going to make it up just like it is on the package. Who here has tried Cincinnati chili? I'd be interested to know if it's something people have tried before. So, I haven't. I know there's some Epic Box subscribers on here. I think I, did I see Patricia's name? Oh yeah, Patricia just popped on here. What did she say? My sister loved this. Okay, yes, because her sister Michelle in Saskatchewan, I don't know if she's popped on here or not, but she's also an Epic Box subscriber, so she got to try this one. So often what happens in Epic Box, you get the products before anybody does. So if you like to try new things, pop on. Oh. Her sister loved it, but she didn't like it. Oh, okay, so I'd be interested to know why you didn't like it. Was it the time it took? Was it the flavor profile? Um, so this one, my understanding is you can add, like just put it on pasta, or you can add cheese to it. That's sort of, I guess, the next sort of level up when it comes to Cincinnati chili. Um, the other way they said was you add chili or cheese, then you can add onions, and then you can add beads. That's sort of like the next layers up. So I guess I'll have to find out. And if you come tomorrow, Patricia, you've already tried it. You don't have to try it, but maybe try mine and maybe it'll taste different. <laughs> I'm going to actually serve it tomorrow on steamed zucchini noodles, like spiralized zucchini noodles instead of pasta, just again for a gluten-free option. So simple, simple recipe. I'm going to turn my little um, stove on here. It takes a little bit. Um, four cups of water, which I actually heated up only because I'm using sort of a tabletop stove, which never heats up as fast as obviously a conventional oven so or conventional stove and Darlene so liked it. Darlene did she liked it oh yay I'm glad 
So, and I'd be interested to know, Darlene, if you put other additional type things on with your Cincinnati chili. So all we're gonna add is we're gonna mix the seasoning of this with four cups of water and a can of tomato paste. So I got my tomato paste here. I need a little, sorry. I need just a little thing to get in here to get it out. Bloop. So we got some tomato paste. We're gonna let that mix in there. And what we're gonna do is just bring this up to a boil and then you just drop it down to a simmer. So once I get this all mixed in there, I'll tell you a little bit about some other delicious products. Well, I know one of the products that I actually didn't like, but Patricia did, that came in our Epic box, which is our polenta. Maybe Patricia can say how she likes her polenta and why she liked her polenta. I know she's not a big potato eater. I'm a potato eater, so I'm just going to mix that in while that's going. And I'm going to put the seasoning in. So again, there's the picture of it. It looks, it's kind of interesting because they have it um, done with some cheese and just some red onion on there. So maybe I'll have some cheese and some red onion for tomorrow's tasting if you want to try that on there as well. So we're going to throw this in here. All right. Oh, you can actually. Yeah, it's interesting. It has the tones of chili and yet it's got kind of that allspice. Hmm. Interesting. So we got just basically three ingredients. So we have water, we have um, tomato paste, and we're going to put in some ground beef. And I actually confirmed this with Epicure because I, I don't often put raw meat into something, but I guess that's the whole... It's gonna cook for an hour, hour and a half on simmer. But it says to put in two pounds of ground beef. So I'm gonna just do that carefully in little pieces because they say to, oh, I guess it's all gonna go in in one big block. And then I'm gonna use my ground meat separator, who we all know is one of my favorites because I like ground beef and I just cannot deal with having to try and break up ground beef all the time with those sort of mamby pamby or like with a fork or whatever. This is just, it just breaks it right up. So they suggest breaking it up in the pot. Ooh, it does smell really delicious. I, it'll be interesting now that I've got kind of one view that says they like it and one view that says they don't like it. So we'll see what the general consensus is. So we're gonna get this up to a boil. And while I was doing it, I'm going to talk about the two products that I'm not demoing tonight. One is the polenta, and that one is just mixed with just basically water and milk. To show you, I see people's comments. If there's any questions, Gord will read them out and I can try and answer them. But chili. This might be an oh. interesting one too, even on like a one pot pasta. Yes? Darling, this is a true Italian meatball is cooked in the sauce raw. This oh! It's a technique. Perfect. See, I'm so glad you joined me, Darlene, because you've taken so many different cooking classes. So I'll just show you that all it is is the hamburger is in there with the tomato sauce and the water, and we're just going to bring that up to a boil. But the two products I'm not demoing tonight um, is the creamy polenta, which I've mentioned. Basically, you just mix it with water and milk. And this is one of those things, I, my understanding with like real polenta is it takes a lot of time and you're doing a lot of stirring, not with this. And this one is done in the microwave if you want. And it's microwave for five minutes. You remove from the microwave and you add in a, a bit more milk and some butter, mix it up again, throw it in the microwave. So it's sort of like a side dish that you would, you could put gravy on it. You could put a meat sauce, like you could put something like the Cincinnati chili on top of it. Um, be interested to know, Patricia, how you've used it, or if anybody else here is a polenta fan, how they serve it. That would be awesome if you'd share it in the comments so people can see it. Patricia so, added Parmesan oh, to hers. Oh, Parmesan. Cheese makes everything better. I really just think cheese makes everything better. Good idea. So that's the creamy polenta. That's one that's come out. And then 
the Swedish meatballs. So it's interesting. I was talking to my sister just about some of the products that were coming out. Um, and she goes, that makes three meatballs. So now we have our honey, honey garlic meatball, which is super delicious. I do say um, don't add the amount of honey that they say if, unless you like really sweet. I find it a bit on the sweeter side. We have the Italian meatballs, which um, one of another girlfriend who has like a little um, Facebook page, um, she shared that she likes to throw that in her, her meatballs. So that one's a really good one. And now we have the Swedish meatballs. And this is done with pork. So you do it with ground pork. But if you're not a pork person, mix it with turkey, mix it with chicken, mix it with whatever you would like. It makes a, a meatball. They say the joke that Ikea, uh, that Epicure has mentioned is it's sort of like Ikea. It's easy to make, but it takes a little bit of time to assemble. So you're going to add some breadcrumbs to it, the seasoning, um, some milk and a little bit of soy sauce and water. And then you're going to make up basically a, a gravy that goes with the Swedish meatballs. So supposed to be mild. Oh, I should mention you had asked, who was it who had asked? Was it Rebecca who had asked about the hot dip the last time? The Mexican, so the Mexican oh, street. Tammy. Who? Tammy. Oh, Tammy. Sorry, Tammy. Um, Tammy, you had asked about the the corn, Mexican street corn dip that we have, and you had asked what kind of heat it would be. I actually find it kind of mildish, um, but my husband said that he found it was building a little bit in his mouth, but not too hot. So, but general consensus is we we both really like it. <laughs> So and the heat disappeared after a few bites. Oh, and he said the heat disappeared after just like a few bites. So that's another one of our returning products. So this, I don't know whether you guys want to sit on here for like an hour and a half or not, but I'm thinking not. <laughs> so I'm going to call my husband back up here. It's just starting to come to a boil, and then I'm going to actually transfer it over to my oven and just let it simmer on there while I do the rest of the demonstration. So hopefully you've said hi. He's captured your name on the on the wheel, and your name will be in entered in for the Cincinnati chili. So best of luck to all of you. Thank you again for joining me. Here comes my husband. Bye. Hello, everybody. Let's see who wins number two. If you won already this evening, like Sue, uh, you're not eligible to be in the draw the second time. So let's see who wins. Oh, that smells good. Yeah. Val D. Val. Congratulations, Val. You have won the Cincinnati Chili. And I know you do lots of different cooking for different groups, so it would be interesting to see what they all think of it. So there you go. It is boiling. And as Darlene says, I am Italian tonight, and I'm making it the true Italian way. And I'm looking forward to sharing this um, live if you guys want to try this tomorrow. Again, I should remind you, my open house is from 10 till 1230. Pop in as you have time. Sample Munch Away visit. I'd love to have you here tomorrow. So it is quarter to eight and I will be back at eight o'clock with a chicken dish that's a TikTok viral sensation. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.